Well, welcome everybody. Uh, this is Ed Lebo. I'm the director of the Phoenix Office of Arts and Culture Public Art Program. And I'm delighted to have all of you here this morning. This is a, what is this, the 10th? We've done 10 online workshops beginning this is 11. in August. 11. This is our 11. We started in August with a Public Art 101. We followed last month with uh, Bill Dambrova's in-depth workshops on some of the digital tools that are used for public art. All of these are online and available for you at any time as a resource at phoenix.gov slash arts and follow the link to the workshop. And we can post that in our chat during the, uh, the workshop today. Um, I would ask everybody to mute themselves while the speakers are speaking. They'll make a presentation. And then after that, of course, if you Put your questions into the chat box as we go along. We'll summarize all of those in the end and have time for a question and answer. Uh, we are delighted today to have uh, Roberto Bahara and Rosario Marquardt and Georgie John as part of r, &R Studios. Um, Roberto and Rosario have known each other since childhood, which was not as long as it might appear on screen. Um, they were born in Argentina and they run r, r Studios out of the Miami. And right now they're in the midst of creating a major beautiful project for the Phoenix SkyTrain rental car center station, which will open in the, the coming year or so. Uh, they've been described by one critic as architects of hope and having worked with them on a project. Um, you know, I know that they've won numerous awards, national and international, largely for their really inspired efforts to build more beautiful and joyful public spaces, communities, and cities, including this Camelback Road underpass that you see behind me. Um, and they have a wonderful knack for weaving visual arts and architecture into city design, and quite honestly, finding new ways to strengthen the bond between art and life, which we often forget are connected, and to make the fantastic part of the everyday. But in addition to works in Phoenix, uh, They've created public art throughout the nation, as I mentioned, in Denver or Miami, their hometown, Copenhagen. And those of you who have been at Coachella in the last couple of years, you may remember their Bethany Mucho big billboard in 2016 and uh, the Supernova as well. And I would be remiss if I didn't mention that a stalwart of their collaborative partnership has been the very gifted architect, Georgie John. So uh, we welcome you all. We're delighted to have you. I'll turn it over to Elizabeth Grahalis, Senior Project Manager, in a second, but I just wanted to introduce Katie Stiegel, Project Manager in our office, Barry Sparkman, also a Project Manager in our office, Doug Oland, who is our Collections Manager, and now to you, uh, Elizabeth Grahalis, for a few additional words of what's come, and then Roberto and Rosario. Thanks so much for joining us today. Um, I'm just going to remind you quickly that October 22nd, next Thursday, is Brad Goldberg. And then the following Thursday, October 29th, is Joe Willie Smith. He will be our 13th workshop. All right. So, Rosario and Roberto, it's your show. Okay. Great. Thank um, you. Can you guys see our screen? Oops. Yes, we can see it. Okay, we can see it. perfect. perfect. Yeah, Here we, have, we have a request to approve or decline uh, to annotate the shared content. Do okay. we say approved? But no, you decline that. Decline that. Okay, perfect. Okay. Yeah. Very good. Perfect. Okay, sorry for the technical <laughs> inconvenience, but uh, here we are. Okay, perfect. So uh, what we are going to do today is um, is uh, what we have decided to do is to to present one project, but to present it's it's often the case that one sees a project as a, as a completed event, and um, and um, and it's sometimes difficult for any one of us to understand uh, uh, the process that one goes by in public art. The long process is often the case that one goes by for to in order to produce these works of art that we see within the public realm. So what we have this, what Rosario and I, together with Georgia, we decided, what we decided to do today is to present one project. Throughout the process, 
that, uh, that is involved in the making of the project. So uh, as you can see, there are a number of um, steps. The project that we are going to share is the one that you will be able to visit very, very soon uh, at the uh, Phoenix International Airport, at the um, rental car facility where the, where the train actually that Will like run trails. will run between the between the, um, the airport and the, um, the rental car facility will run so that would be the, the station at the rental car facility so um, uh, we divided the, we, the presentation is organized with a little short introduction the application process the proposal that we made once the, we were selected. Uh, design development, design team coordination, construction drawings, fabrication and installation. Next. Introduction. So we're going to the introduction. So here we are some time ago. We go through this one fast. Yeah, because, because... Ed, I think he made the perfect introduction. Yes. So. <laughs> yes. So, uh, so, uh, so a few images of our work in Miami, close to Miami here in Florida, together with the, uh, the Bloomberg um, Philanthropy Peace and Love. And that this is a dear project to us because it was done with, um, with the Parkland uh, High School. It's a kind of memorial in the second anniversary that uh, recently went past by in February 14th. A, a super billboard similar to the one that we did for for Coachella and all together now in um, in um, in Denver, Colorado. So what we're trying to show here is the range of our work, two additional projects, um, one for downtown Miami and one for the the Paris Art Museum, a project by Herzog de Meran, a very um, well known architectural firm from Basel, Switzerland. <laughs> And of course, our project is beautiful for all, not the whole museum. No, and, not the, yet. and the new color that we would like to introduce, the pink color, uh, the application process. For the application process, and we're not sure what you guys uh, listening today, what, the, what kind of background you have. But in any case, the very first part of any project, uh, uh, the project begins with an application process. First with a call. Yeah, first with a call by the given agency, you know, usually say it's a public agency, public art agency, uh, um, uh, and there is a call where they tell you how many images you can present, uh, a CV. What or, type of project. A product, what kind of projects you have done, and it's a specific call for a specific project. So we have a, we have by now, as, uh, as we become older, we have a large portfolio portfolio of projects of realized projects of different kinds and we try to cater in a way to the the project call a, a, a series of a series of images that may introduce the 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 jury to both to our work and kind of um, stunt our ability our range of projects, the kind of range of projects that we can do, and our ability to actually realize the projects. And, and this is very, very important in our part, because it's often the case today that, um, you know, digital technology allows you to, to draw projects in the computer in a fantastic way, but it's not often the case that one might be either able to realize them or understand the you know complexity. fully the complexity uh, um, involved in the realization of these projects rosario and i study architecture back in argentina george john our partner is a licensed architect here in florida we are licensed our firm is licensed to do architectural projects so we have that advantage in a way and uh, so we were selected among yes, the yes. i think um, the call probably between 100 and 200 people apply. With, Usually, with the images only. Yeah, so we applied with the images that you just saw with the thumbnails, oh. right? The images that we applied with. We were one of the four teams selected. I believe there were four teams selected. Usually there are between 100 and 200 applications from all over the country. Sometimes a number of them are international. 
um, um, people that you know introducing themselves to to the American to the country, let's say. And we were lucky to be selected among the four finalists. It's at that point that um, that usually one travels to the place pre-COVID-19. Uh, um, uh, one travels in this case to Phoenix and introduces oneself in person to 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 a jury. I would call that um, that. Um, well, in general, it's composed by members of the art community and also the design team, the architects of the project, the engineers, and of course, in this case, the Office of Culture and, and right. Public so, art. so we're talking about the architects, the architects that in this case, you know, are the architects Designed of the, the station, of the station, of the of the of the. Metro state, the metro station, the, the rail station that arrives to the to the rental car facility. So, um, so, so uh, as one of the one of the teams selected uh, among these two hundred, let's say, we are asked to present a proposal. So we start this. We start the presentation of the proposal with uh, with uh, with our work once again we remain we we remind the the, the jury of where we are coming from you know what's our expertise in terms of public public art so this is a sample these are i think the the what we showed right in the presentation this is exactly what we showed so here this slide just to for you to understand the 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 way that we select projects to to share in the client we selected a project, a project in done in con in, in in concrete, one in a, one in a aluminum, and, a, and one and, that it was already the building already existed. Yeah. So uh, so uh, so in this case, the, the last of the images, the last of the images, the, the one in Providence, Rhode Island, um, this this kind of suggesting something that you're going to be seeing in a minute, in a way. So it's directly related. Some one of these images is already directly related to the project that we are presenting. So then we show this image. This is a really important image, and it's now we're zeroing one project that we have done. And what we do here, we show one the model of the project, a drawing of the project, and the project realized with Rosario below. No, and that's uh, not... yes, I think it no, is. It you. is not... It is okay, not you. Okay, matter. it is not her. So what we the intention of this slide for us is very important because here we show the correspondence between our the, 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 the idea of the project, the conception of the project in a way, in the form of a model, in the form of a model, how we represent it with a drawing, and how the, the, the project realized. The project as it is realized is absolutely it's it's identical to the to the to the to the model to the drawings etc and and we do this because for us it's really important really important to 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 share with the jury to share with our audience our ability to 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 build what we propose and to build it in a way that is exactly like the drawings that we will be presenting the second thing, and last but not least, as part of the introduction, we present these two images that illustrate, hopefully, our ability to radically transform a, a, the environment. You know, with very uh, so here we see a kind of before and after situation. We are giving this the warehouse on the left of the screen, and our project radically transforms a kind of bunker-like architecture into something that is very open. And, and unique. Uh, another project that where we show the before and after as well, in order to illustrate how, the kind of impact that our projects have in the urban in the urban environment. And now we go into the, the 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 project itself. You know, in Phoenix, and we're looking at the station. You know, in the on the on the left hand side, we, the so, project of the station. The station right. didn't exist. Yeah. And that is important. The project didn't exist, so one has to imagine 
what the project is to be like. So there is a, we have the advantage of having this architectural background that allows us to, to read drawings in a way that sometimes is different, difficult to other uh, to artists with a different background. Right, so um, so um, and we see a plan on the left yes. of the same station that we see on the on the on the left. Yeah, this right. is the wall that we have to work with. Can we see our our? Can we see our course, cursor? Uh, cursor, yeah. our mouse. No, okay. I don't think so. I don't think I can. Okay, okay, okay. No, don't very worry, good. Don't worry. So, and the, the, what is marked in red, these are the two walls that we have to intervene. So, the project is uh, the, the, the train station arrives to an upper floor uh, um, and it one kind of walks out or, or in from a kind of semi open space on both sides of the, of the, of the station. And, so, and um, the call was uh, very clear in the sense that they didn't want to have a enclosed wall, but they wanted to have a, a door where, where the air can go through. So it had to be an open For you wall. to have an idea of the length of these walls, they are about 250 feet long each. each. Okay. So the length of the project is about 500 feet when you add the two, the two, the two walls on either side of the station, and um, this I think was the first slide. It's a kind of conceptual slide whereby we present the project, you know, and the project is the horizontal line is the wall that we were proposing, and uh, um, that is a multicolored uh, wall. And where the colors were coming from, that it was a it is like a celebration of the, of the Phoenix sky and landscape. So we were taking the colors from the sky, the vegetation, and the. It's a it's a and this is the key. This is the, the most important concept of the project, is to to kind of um, represent through color the unique beauty of nature in Arizona. Because this is the moment, this the, the train station is the moment where where a visitor to Phoenix to to the state actually first feels, in a way, the impact of of the geography of the place. You come out of the air conditioning airport, you come out of the air conditioned train, and you are confronted with the sky and and sometimes with the heat no? that one feels as one arrives in town. So, um, so both in terms of the arrivals and memoria and, and departures of, of, of visitors, this is a key site in, a, in, a, in Phoenix. That's why we're so excited with the project. It's a project that everyone will see, everyone arriving or departing from, from town, from Phoenix, will, will, be, will be going through in a way. So we wanted the project to be at the same time memorable and super simple in a way because it's a it's a very long project, not 250 feet on either side. So we needed to arrive to to a project that was uh, simple to build, you know, both in terms of its construction, but also in terms of um, in terms of a, a budget. In terms of the budget, in we terms of the budget, within budget, you know, we were using. A these pipes are like out of the shelf elements. There was no um, like a very specialized fabrication. You just, we, the, 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 the tubes that is the main component of the project is, is a very standard element. So what you see here on, on in the above, you, you, you begin to see the, the screen. We transform the wall into a screen and these very important because, because because you allow the, the air, the breezes to go through the wall, quote unquote, right? So it becomes a screen of sorts. This screen picks up the colors of the 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 the, the, the colors of the geography of the place in a way. And it's composed of several layers. You know, the several layers, can you go back one? Uh, you see below you have a there is a strip 
in the in all the slides. So what you're looking at below, above you see the screen as it changes as one walks by the screen, and below you see a strip of a, of like a like a plan of that section of the wall where you can see that that screen is made of five layers of pipes that are separated uh, from each other at different distances. And that creates a kind of a, what we it's a, what we call a kind of a three-dimensional mural of sorts. Uh, uh, because uh, and that engages the visitor in a very active way because as she or he walks by the piece, the, the, the screen changes color, colors. And that to us that was perhaps the most important discovery of the of the of the proposal, if you wish. Uh, the ability of this project, actually what we call the sky curtain, to to actually have a dynamic uh, um, effect in a way, a kind of also an emotional a kind of um, response. You know, through the colors, the colors and the weather, but also to, to but also yes. to engage the viewer as she she or he walks by the by. So it's a very interactive piece, but it's not a kind of high tech piece that is difficult to maintain, but actually low tech piece. You know, that involves the body of the person walking by, and that to us that combination of. Um, high impact on the one hand, but low tech and easy to maintain, therefore, kind of project for us was key. I mean, we thought, well, this, we thought, exactly. with Rosario, this is going to be a winner because yeah. it's beautiful. It can also, it, it, it can be built really well, you know, within the budget and, uh, and it's going to have an, an, an amazing, and it's easy to maintain over time. But also at the same time, it creates, it creates an atmosphere, at an atmosphere because you have the colors and you have the the air that is warm and the colors are reflected so it, it you are in a very special place that we thought that it was like the city of phoenix so we kind of end that proposal presentation with this slide that uh, kind of goes back to the very first ones that I show you, where we show our our work in other places. In other words, our ability to build the images. There was a video, actually, of the wall changing colors that we are we were unable to put in the PowerPoint today. But there was the final image was a video that took you through the through the wall actually, and you saw how. The colors were going to change. But also, we had to convince the jury that we knew how to do it. Yeah. So we did this drawing that you will see how it changed over the process. So this this drawing is it's, it's is what we call you know the, the construction drawing in a way. How are we to build this uh, that, screen? That we thought before starting to work with the with the design team. Yeah. Okay, now this chapter is design development, design team coordination and construction documents. So we were lucky, we were selected. Thank you, Ed. Thank you, everybody in Phoenix. We were super happy, super excited. We thought that we had done a terrible job, to tell you the truth. Uh, that's how low our self-esteem yeah, may I have think, been I that think, day. I think uh, <laughs> we were not very confident. Technology didn't work either. Yeah, there was some sort of problem that we were not happy with the presentation but we got a call that same day hey you guys won we were super happy and um, we got a present for ourselves and uh, and uh, we came back to town and as we came back to town we began this second stage third stage of the process which is to re-engage with um, with um with the, in the design development of the project. Okay, now let's be serious. The project was going to be done in aluminum tubes. We had conceived the project in, in aluminum tubes, and we had conceived the project in sections, sections of about four feet long that were to be taken to the site to be installed, were to be pre ensemble let's say, and taken to the site. Yeah, but before that also we were studying if you see on your left hand side of the screen the different oh, yeah. possible patterns how we should stagger the pipes 
and we were trying the first pattern and doing a very preliminary model with pencils to see what happens, how, how do you see it? And then the second pattern and the third pattern until uh, we arrived to the best solution. First, we started with pencils, then we already fabricated the pipes in wood, and, uh, and then we started to work also with the colors. You may not realize it, but as we, you know, the in plan, the project changed too. Initially, there were five layers. Uh, um, we realized in the process of making the different models, etc., that the five layers were going to be, there was one too many, actually. So we went from five layers to four layers. We realized that with four layers of pipes, we were going to have, we were going to be able to have the effect we had described in the presentation. So um, this is like, after we did the, the, this first tryout and we decided the pattern, how, how the pipes will be uh, located, uh, we started to work with the design team, with the engineers, and this is like the fifth or sixth conversations when, where we were going back and forth. We, we were doing the drawings and they were comment, if you see in the... So you can see the com some of the comments drawn into the slide. This is, this is not a mistake. This is actually that we had, you know, that now involved the architect, the engineer, and ourselves, the architect of the building. I mean, I have to say the team was excellent. I mean, very seldom we have had, we have worked in a team that has worked so smoothly. Probably this is due to Ed, Ed probably selecting us all and putting us together or the jury. But uh, it was, it's a, it's a really good team. Because actually. If, if you have to imagine that this is the 0.01% of the project, our project of the whole station. So we are nothing within the scope of the project. No, so no, if no. we don't have somebody like the, the office of public art in this case, Ed, that say, hey, you have to pay attention to this guy. Sometimes people can run over you. So first and, and you have to convince the team that you know what you're talking about. And at the same time, you have to be open to their, uh, recommendations. recommendations. Uh, uh, so it and, was an excellent But team. I have to say one thing. Uh, uh, the project was in relation, the project is, is some, you know, it's, it's, a, it's an important project. It's an important budget for a very important budget for a public art project. But in terms of the station, as Fosario said, it's 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 nothing. It's nothing. So because hundreds of millions of, do of dollars versus one million dollars, let's say, just to, to do round numbers. So so we are nothing. But at the same time, by the same token, because of the location of the project and the length of the project, this is perhaps the most. You know, it's one of the. It's a project that is going to have an incredible impact. In the station itself, and that really coexists and co participates of the architecture of the station. So, so the architect, I think, very good. He was first in was. selecting us, we, we were thankful, but also he was very conscious, I think, of the need of a project of this kind. He liked the project himself a lot, I think. And, and therefore, he remained somehow engaged throughout the process, making sure that the project came out the way that we had initially intended. Uh, intended. And, and so everybody, in a way, not only us, but and, and the Office of Public Art, of course, you know, they're our most important supporters, but also the architects. And, 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 the and through the architects, the, yeah. the engineers, we all became aware that we all had a stake in making this project real, pretty much as intended, as first intended in the presentation that you saw. So here you see, you will see a video where we were trying to be all in the same page how to um, create the wall, that it was with four feet sections that were like drawers that you would put it in, in an already made structure. It, I mean, if you get close to your screen, you may begin to see that the, the, the elements are becoming more complex. 
you know, we have several layers, the covering, for example, you can see the covering for the upper part, how it becomes part of the project and, and the supports below, how they have even the bolts drawn. So it's a, it's, it's a, it's a perspective, but it's a, it's a working drawing perspective in a way. And then we go into this one. So this drawing where yes. again, after we were more or less all in the same page with the idea of a four feet section that we will be built in the, in the shop, in the fabricator shop and install it. Then we realized that it may be very complex because it will be super heavy and you need a lot of equipment and a space to be able to move this yeah. four so feet on the panel. In the left, you have the initial proposal with the five layers and on the right you have the the the, the proposal as built and, yeah, and you can different yeah. yeah and you can begin to see that the one on the right let's say is it has many more elements many more elements than than the one on the the one on the left we knew we could build it right on the left but then in order to build it you know we had to interact with architects engineers etc and 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 keeping the, the 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 size of the different elements as intended in the on the left you know the final result is pretty much as you see on the right uh, rosario rosario mentioned something that is really important initially we were going to take the piece prefabricated to the to the insections to the station and install it there but there was a very very important change we proposed a piece in aluminum tubes, but and with a with one kind of structure. Let's say, uh, as we develop the project in consultation with the engineer, we all decided that it was going to be better, and I, it was going to be better to make the project in steel with steel pipes. That is much, and heavy, yeah, and that, that that is much heavier. And that therefore uh, uh, makes it really difficult to transport uh, the the piece, you know, in sections pre 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 uh, ensemble sections, you know, and, and fabricated to the side. So, uh, but at the same time, and the reason why there is a technical explanation for this, it's it's usually better to work with one material to mix. We were discouraged, and, and and we 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 share that approach. Actually, that we realized that to mix the aluminum with the, with the steel um, could develop into issues of corrosion over time. You know, because of the contact of one metal with the other, and uh, we realized that um, um, avoiding two 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 materials and working with just one steel although one is a stainless steel and the other one is not it's 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 um, painted it was going to be be better for the long life long last long lasting life and maintenance of the project so that's what we decided to do but with this decision and here we see we see one page of the working drawings um, that we that don't want to, we don't want to bother you <laughs> but these there are 15 pages of these drawings actually not one uh, but this, 15 these are the drawings that we do with the engineers back and forth so these are the engineers uh, uh, working drawings we send the drawing they send it back then we comment on it they send it back we comment with they send it back and eventually there are 15 pages of, with every possible detail yeah every single bolt you know so it's a it's a and then you have another 15 pages uh, of what is called shop drawings that these are the drawings after we we are in the same page with the engineers the job drawings are done by the fabricator that has to interpret those drawings and make the shop drawings that are exactly how he will do each of the pieces so, for example, in, in these drawings, in the shop drawing, you know, each piece, each piece that is to be involved in the construction of the project is to be is shown. It has to be drawn. It has to be drawn, actually. And um, and um, so it's a, it's really important. Can you go back, please? It's really important in this case. 
I mean, our work in this case, the first was to work with the engineers and the fabric and the fabricators in the, you know, with the components, the sizes of things, etc. Keeping in mind the initial intention. Remember that you have to keep in mind the initial and intention that, that's of the project. Key because a project can be so can go so very wrong yeah. if you don't stay always focused in the intent of the project because suddenly one thing is changed here another thing is changed there yeah. and suddenly the, the idea of the project is gone so and, and that's what we were showing that we had an ability to perform at in those drawings where we show the model the drawing and the project realized so we need to be able to do the same at the end of this project you see, we need to be able to show the drawing, the initial drawing and the final project, and they need to be similar, right? So there are 15 pages of shop drawings. So a total of 30 drawings of this kind are done in collaboration with, um, with the engineers and fabricators. And the architects. And the architects. Right? And so, the so you need to be able to you need to be able to, to read these drawings. And this is very difficult, you know, because there are they are, they are, this was an exceptional team, but sometimes teams are not as, 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 as good perhaps as, as this one was. Sometimes a team is not always in the same page, let's say. So there are competing interests uh, uh, of one kind or another. And, uh, and, uh, and a project can very easily go wrong, meaning the proposal is beautiful, it's accepted to, by everyone. But then when the project is built, it just doesn't look like initially intended and, uh, and, um, and there's a problem. So okay. here, oh, sorry. Here is uh, the first mock-up or the second mock-up. Yeah, full that... scale. By mock-up, we mean now, now it's not a model, it's a, it's a mock-up. By mock-up, we mean full scale. Same materials, everything. Yeah. Yeah. And you can see the project is to be nine feet tall. You can see the person nearby. Uh, um, some of the tubes, the black tubes are not yet painted. You know, you see the four layers in position and you begin to see the drawing now built, built. if you wish. And you know, again, all... even though it won't be the full um, panel prefab, Anyways, it will be done in sections of four feet, but the pipes will be installed in place. So, for example, here on the left, and, and for you to see, if you look at the upper part of the drawing, you see that there is an element that initially we didn't have. Initially, we had the, initially we had the lights within the, the, frame. the frame, and eventually we realized that um, that um, no, we you know in, cons in, right, in consultation with the lighting consultant. So there are consultants that we call, you know, into the project in a way that we pay for, uh, in, and we call into the project. Actually, that was very very important because the light consultant told, told us, well, this may not be the best way to illuminate the project. If you really want to have the project bright. You know, at night you, you need to do it in a different way. You need way. to separate the light at least yeah. one so, or two feet. Yeah, so know. we had to, to to redesign the upper part of the project. You know, during the 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 the, the development of the project, like we had to redesign the upper part to incorporate a new way of lighting it. And last but not least, you know, we have the installation of the project. What you see, first of all, wait, wait a second. On the right, you're going to see a short, very short video. On the left, you're going to have, see a very short video in one second. On the right, the plan of the station that you see marks the, how many sections do we have? We will we'll have 112 different sections where the colors change a little bit. So if you see below, you see the interlacing of the, of the colors. So, so below, above each of the circles that you see in both in both walls, above and below, in the drawing on the right upper hand of your screen, each of those circles is one of the sections. Each of those circles is what we see in the three drawings below. That's one section, right? So the section tells you 
in each section, which ones are the colors, how many, et cetera, et cetera. And if you look at the video. And, and we have 112 of those sections. So, so the installation becomes crucial now, and we're lucky we have a very, really good. Uh, yeah. Very easy. This is a beautiful video that Ed sent, us, sent to us, and we added the whistling guy just to show how easy it is to build it. So it's pipe per pipe following the keys. Uh, you, what you see at the bottom are the drawings that you see here in the screen at the bottom of the video. The, the little white papers is the key call the key for the colors that he has to to follow he has to follow that the installer has to follow so so at the end the installation became easier became even easier than initially intended and, and it, it was very important for us there were a number of hurdles along the way you know this the structure of the station uh, the structure of the uh, the structure of the the structure of the piece itself, and you know the materials. Uh, there were many, many hurdles that we had to overcome along the way in order to arrive to, to this to the installation that appears to be like super, super simple. simple. You know, it's a, you don't need the heavy machinery, anything. You go pipe by pipe. You just have to be careful. As the guy is being very careful, and he's using a piece of cloth, you know, to 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 handle each of the pipes, which happen uh, if you take them one by one, they happen not to be heavy and they're easy to to place in place as long as you follow each of the one hundred and twelve drawings that serve as a key for you to place the pipes. So again, now we have an 112 drawings that are the key drawings. And now we see some shots. This is during construction because the project is not finished yet. So not all the layers are in place yet. There is one layer in the back. If towards... you see if you see the image in this in the in the left on, le on the left in the screen, you'll see that there are some holes that are already the, that they are not filled. In. So there are two layers that are not in place yet in the shot on the very left, as long. In the one in the right, there is one layer. But you can initially see, you can begin to see how the project is going to look uh, one way from the outside and a different way from the inside. Yes, the yellow part is what you see from the outside that we chose yellow because it's a color that will fade less and the, these, these pipes have the, sometimes it have to take the heat of the sun, so we choose yellow on the on the outside and the inside the colors are stronger here the, you see the painting is a very important the kind of paint etc cetera, etc cetera, is another big issue that we went through you know we have some experience that is in a way similar to the experience that one may have in phoenix living in florida and having done a number of projects throughout the state so we have a good background. We just finished another project for the GSA in Puerto Rico, and we have this ability to draw, to to work with with color and paint because we're working in a similar environment in this case. No? But it's a yes, very and, important and, part of the project. And the paint is a super, super good paint. Yeah, it's a super paint. Anyway, <laughs> so you have the drawing in, on the right. You have the, the, the reality on the left. Not finished yet. Yeah, right? still missing two, two layers. And again, on the left, the drawing, and on the right, the work in progress. And I think this is it. Perfect. Sorry if we went too long. That was great. Thank you so much. Okay, You're welcome. thank you. Um, arts and culture staff who has been tracking questions. I have some here and I actually plugged in a couple questions myself as we were going. Hi, I have, this is Barry. Super. 
Um, a question from Allison. How does the wall change colors? What technical aspects of the structure allows it for it to change? Um, okay. can, I, can I comment on this before you? I, I thought that you guys said in the very beginning that you wanted this interactive so that when people walked past it, that the lights would change. That's why I asked that question. Oh, no, no, no. It's in, the, the project is interactive because it's very low tech. Nothing is uh, technological here. Is in the way that the pipes are staggered, when you see it uh, in perspective, you will see one color. When you start to walk, walk close to the wall, those colors will open and you see what is behind. And at one point you see only the, the last layer, but as, as you get closer and you move, um, you will see other colors and at the same time, there is like an interwoven layers of colors that little by little the yellows start to appear and then the greens start to show up and then the blues. So it's changing as you walk, but also in the way that the pipes are staggered makes you see the colors in different ways, but there is no technology whatsoever. Yeah. The, the only thing that you will have is the light, you know, at, at night, night, but yes. nothing else, actually. And, and that is done that way because we think that it's in a public project, in the public realm, is as, 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 as if you can do it without high tech, in general, have a long opportunity to survive the project because usually maintenance is difficult for public agencies to exercise and is a high traffic area where, you know, and it's, it's close to the body and we can touch stuff in a way. So it's, it's best to, to work with um, kind of low tech, quote unquote, the kind of um, approach. Okay, thank you. What is the difference between drawings and shop drawings and why do you need both? Well, there are like two or three layers of drawings. One is the first drawings where you present the proposal. Then you have the design development drawings where we start to think how we will build this proposal. Then you have the construction documents that is the drawings with all the dimensions, all the materials, everything that is needed so you are able to create a budget to know how much it costs down what, to the bolt yeah at that point but down then to the those shop those construction documents have to be in dialogue with the engineer so then it gets more complex because the engineer has to make the calculations and make sure that everything works so for example in this case that's another factor you know the separation between the the you know, there's safety concerns of the different kinds that, and, and the safety codes that, um, that the project has to comply with. So you have the technical uh, requirements coming from the, you have the aesthetic intention that comes from your proposal, the, the, the technical requirements coming from, the, from the engineer and the, the safety compliance that, that, that every project in the public realm has to live For example, to live with, in this you know, case, uh, the pipes, we were proposing them in aluminum, but aluminum is too soft. So if somebody was running and it was possible you know, that the, 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 the Somebody the pipes... was afraid that, you know, somebody will go with a, with a cart or with a, one of these big suitcases and, you know, somehow go through the pipes, which was yes, very difficult. It is ask, difficult, but, but the code says that yeah. if it's a railing, because at the end of the day, they call it railing, it has to be in a steel. So there is no way that... So, so this is interesting. This is an interesting distinction because initially the project is described as a wall. We propose a, a, what we think of as a screen, you know, to, as a screen, but then uh, from the code point of view, in fact, it's considered to be, it's considered to be a railing. Because there know. is nothing on the other side. Yeah, so. because this one story above ground, okay? So, so if you were to go through, if you were to be, if a little kid is able to go through the, the pipes, you see, uh, it, it, can, it can fall into, 
you know, one story. Yes, and, and also to finish with the drawings, after we were with the engineer, there is the shop drawings, that those drawings are made by the fabricator, where he interpret everything and prepare these drawings to be able to build the, the piece itself. And those involve each cut, for example, in the steel that is to be made. So, for example, in the upper part, you know, there might be one part above and there might be some welding or or sometimes it can be folded, you know, depending on the size. Everything has to be uh, detailed. But in any case, every piece or every folding that he uh, has every to do. Making of the piece has to be uh, quoted in the drawings, has to be, you know, drawn. And approved you know. by us. Right, we have to control that because this is all the way this is all part of the legal aspect in terms of the construction of the project. Is if if the the working drawings are not done properly and if you are not able to control them, well, you may end up with something that is not what you intended. Because that's why it's really important to be able to read the construction drawings well and to participate and the shop and, the shop, and then and then the shop drawings. You know, if you're in, because there, there is a control aspect in a way to to each of these instances in a way. There's a quality control aspect to each of these instances in a way. It's about quality control. No? And then we're we are, four sorry. minutes for questions. Yeah. Uh, I have to cut you off there, uh, yeah. Dr. Rosario, but we have a few more minutes for questions. Are there others that, that have come in? Uh, there's two related questions. What kind of paint is it? And can you be more specific about the paint? Is it urethane? Well, at one point, the best paint for outdoor outdoors is it was the, how do you say the powder? Um, powder, powder, powder. powder, powder coated um, yes. paint. The, 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 that, that paint that is like a powder and you bake it and it's super strong the pro and, and, and it, 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 it lasts forever. It's fantastic. We it, like it. We have done it. That yeah, way. But the problem, the shortcutting, the shortcut is that if you need to restore it, it's very difficult to restore because it's 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 baked into it's the baked material. Into the material, so it's very, very difficult to restore. Now there are new paints that uh, are trying to compete with the with the, the powder bake, and there are several types. But the, the most important is the urethane paint. It's a kind of a kind of paint that uh, that living for. 10 years and then it starts to fade very little, but you have the possibility to repaint the pieces. So it's uh, it's what is being used lately more than the powder coated. Powder coated is good if people don't touch it, if they it, it's in a place that nobody can touch it. But in this case, that yeah. you may have cards that scratch the, the pipes or things like that, it's better to be able to retouch them. I still like powder coating. For example, our project, just to, to, to complete the answer, our project in Denver is powder coated paint. And uh, it, it looks amazing and it after- it more than 10 years. Yeah, it looks amazing after 13 years. It looks as new, you know. So. This is a really good question to talk about um, kind of your environment. So the environment here in Arizona is harsh, right? The light is really harsh, the wind. Um, so uh, the team worked really hard to do some research on a new product um, or types of products. And I believe the company that this coating came from what is called Tenemic, which is actually cement spelled backwards. We thought that was a fun interaction. Um, I'll put a link in the chat box here to the Tenemic website. And um, if you're making a public art project, it might be a, a path to research um, to see if it was right um, for your, for the specific application. But in this case, um, it's, after it seemed right for you guys. It's a very, very good quality paint. And also they are able to create any kind of color. So for the public art project is, it is very good. Yeah. The colors that you see or that you will see are unique, you know, created by us actually. And the company allows you to create the color, quote unquote, if you wish, 
and kind of and they produce it according to your and specification. they send it to you you approve it you yeah say and again no, there is a process involved a in process. that come back and forth you know between artist and company uh, that yes, takes time whatever, because i don't remember but i think we have i don't remember seven or ten colors right so the colors as you know they don't work alone they work together with the next color so it's it's a long process till you get exactly to the right color of each of one, one thing that is important for those of you who may be new to public art is that the to and we didn't mention this the to i mean we applied for this project three years ago approximately so so the project has taken three years to do actually and that's important because uh, sometimes one is not aware that a public art project involves a long process in a way that usually takes you know this amount of time especially for a large-scale project Moreover, because the station was not built exactly so... we, we have been involved with projects that have lasted for seven years for example in seattle we're we're completing this this i think it's in january you know a, 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 another train station actually of the the underground system in seattle we're doing a, a little square with a large 60 feet tall public art piece and the square itself with you know urban furniture etc and it's taking you know it took seven years seven years so i mean it's a, so you have to, this you is have a to good prepare to last you know this is a good place to um you know since a project lasts so long um we've got another question in the chat box about um your budget um yeah. and if you could talk a little bit about your budget how much do you pay yourself how do you figure out the budget and how to make it stretch so long how much goes to your fabricator how much goes to your consultants can you talk about that and i think that's our last question so far yes the the the, the most important thing is that you have to be very careful most of the time we are artists, so we want the piece to be made and exactly in the way that we want it, and we don't uh, be careful with the budget. But the budget is a key, key, key component of of the of the work of the of of the success of the project. So there are like different uh, layers where the budget is it becomes more adjusted and more adjusted at the beginning. The only thing that you have to think when you do a proposal is to make sure that you have enough money to do it without going to the little bolts and thing. But you say, OK, this so, is per square feet. It's going to be one dollar. And I'm sure that I can do this for so, one dollar. So usually what you do, what you want to do is to develop over time, you know, a network of uh, of um, of fabricators, of companies that you want to be able to consult as you begin to imagine the project. You know, I mean, we have the advantage of having done a number of projects already, so we know the numbers. But at the very beginning, what we did was to consult the fabricate a fabricator, you know, ahead of time as we were making the proposal in a way. And this is really key, what Rosario said, because unless you are on time and on budget, your artistic um, um, um... No, two, two, two bad things can happen that uh, the project runs out of money and you the money that was supposed to be your fee you have to use it and and the second one that the project doesn't look good because you you do, you couldn't use the or materials it's, or it's not completed on time those are the three things that really you have you're thinking about all the time you know uh, uh, that you need to avoid because if any of those happen if the project is over budget if the project is not done on time you know uh, um, you don't ever get another public project again you know and or if you don't make money yeah or it takes too long it, 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 your your studio disappears exactly so it's a lot and it's experience uh, we have we have lost so much money. Yeah, I lost all my hair, <laughs> yes. for example. But, <laughs> but little by little, you start to realize how long does it take, what yeah. it takes. You. And it's, but it's fun. It still it remains fun. But the the network. And, of, and it's possible. It's possible yeah. to survive. But you have to become very smart and realize the the length of the project and the amount of hours that you will be involved. There is, there is always a 
and in public art in general, not uh, in this case, but in general is that the only thing that doesn't people don't value with with um, the money sign is the proposal is the that is what the artists know how to that are specialists to create an idea most of the time people ask you for the proposal for free and the proposal is Sometimes for, uh, there are a lot of yeah. artists that have, they, yeah. they just send, do proposals for free, and they don't realize that that is what they have, what is, that is their uniqueness. So it's very important that we value our work yeah. and the work of Good. ideas, well. to, to value the idea of the proposal, that is what is so unique about our in addition to the work that you are doing and the budget of the work that you're presenting, you have to think of your studio. Because, I mean, you're going to present 10 proposals, let's say, I mean, you're going to get one. Yes. I, again, I'm going to say this again for you not to be discouraged. But you have to be prepared to present, to apply first and not to be selected because sometimes it's not the right fit. You thought that it was going to be the right fit, but it's, or it's not. not the right panel. Or... or it's not the right panel. They don't select you. So not always you are selected. Uh, uh, you're in, and, and then once you are selected, once you're a finalist, you know, probably there are, again, 100 apply, four are finalists, then one wins. So at that point, you know, you also have to, you may not win, but you have to maintain the studio over time so of every 10 proposals you get one and you make right? 10 proposals but you have to be able to pay the studio you know for the 10 proposals that are to be done over time you see so that's when it becomes even more complex the, the economy if you wish of a public art project you know. Mario and Roberto, I wanted to thank you for all of that. And uh, I wanted to point out a few things. One is that, uh, as you know, our office, when we do ask for proposals, we, we pay the artists because that's a big part of the intellectual property that you're involved in providing to the city. And that's an important piece to this. The other thing is earlier, you gave me all kinds of great credit for being the god of this project. And thank you for that. Uh, I wish to be all powerful at times, but the reality, as you know, is that uh, you, you got here through the competitive process and uh, the quality of your work. And I also wanted to give a, a quick shout out to uh, Barry Sparkman. Barry has been in the trenches on this project and uh, making all the visits to fabricators and uh, site to keep you apprised as COVID has limited travel for everybody. And so, I just wanted to thank Barry for all the work that yes, 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 yes. he done on this. One last question, just not to belabor this, but I know you worked closely with the fabricator as this unfolded, but very briefly, could you just describe how their expertise helped you refine your designs so that you could get to something buildable? I think uh, the fabricators were excellent. Um, uh, they sometimes uh, you feel bad calling the fabricator because you want them to change this or that you are not sure or you don't like what they did in this case so simple so smooth and um and they had a, a lot of knowledge it's incredible yeah. we really learned a lot working with them so one important Council, in my opinion, is to allow within the budget for the making of mock-ups, models of the project by you, but also mock-ups, you know, full-scale mock-ups, which at the end are going to be the ones that you're going to see, you know, and you're going to be able to see one-to-one, -one, you know, full-scale, what can be done perhaps better or what can be done differently, etc. And you have something very tangible to speak about with the fabricator, you know, and that makes the conversation easier for everybody. And I don't know, Georgie, if you have something to add, because Georgie yeah. was the one who was very much. Let me let me show you our studio just for you to have an idea. Video tours are always good. 
<laughs> Beautiful. No, but it, it, what about uh, the, your relation with the fabrication? Uh, because Georgie was the uh, one who was. I, I think uh, everything has been said <laughs> by Roberto Rosario. The only thing I, you know, I want to just underline is that this was a very complicated project than what it seemed. And we had a great team, uh, including, you know, you know, the, uh, the engineers, architects, uh, the fabricator, you know, we were all, uh, uh, you know, be able to be on the same page. And that uh, has to be, you know, credited uh, to um, Ed and Barry. I work very closely with Barry and uh, without his kind of help along each step can be possible. And um, what is, I think, most unique about this project is, this, you know, the, the art project is one, probably 1% 1 of the overall construction budget, but it has a greater impact than that 1%. And that's really kind of, I think, Barry and Ed kind of stretching the impact of the art and the artist. So, um, you know, I, I want to underline, you know, I think uh, both Ed and especially Barry, I, you know, I interact with kind of more kind of day-to-day um, -day, Every day, uh, yes. in the projects. So for yesterday, for example, we had a, uh, you know, a, a inspection of the, of the wall and, um, you know, we couldn't be there and Barry this years, you know, at the site. So we had, you know, um, the full support of the, you know, the art, public art office in Phoenix. And the, that goes, you know, a long way, <laughs> you know, but everything else, I think it's, uh, you know, Robert John Rosario has already mentioned it. Thank you, George. It's nice to see you. Uh, and thank you, one and all. The, the one thing I would just add to that is that for more than 30 years, this program of public art, dating back to 1986, 86, has had great support up and down the chain in the city, city council, and the aviation department in this case. Huge fans of this work, huge advocates of this work. And that partly explains why the team has been so supportive uh, in solving the problems that, and challenges that your work presents. So thanks, Sarah. Spread just beyond this office to everybody in the, uh, in the city that works on these things. But let and me tell you, Barry and Ed, you, your office, it's so, so good in the process. You don't know sometimes. Sometimes other offices is just, okay, it's all done. The project has been approved and you are on your own. And um, we, we, for, for us, it's a pleasure to work with your office. Yeah. It's so easy. Um, Maybe also... we know each other already because this is not the first project, but uh, we, we really enjoy working with it's you. It's important for those of you applying for a project also to realize that you kind of grow with the project that you apply to. You start with a small project and you grow both in terms of the scale of the project as well as the budget, you know, kind of one project at a time. You don't start, you know, usually it's very difficult to get this kind of project without some background because, because it's very um, complicated. But, but you can start with a smaller project and build up experience into these kind of project in a rather fast a, a manner, but it takes time. You have to be willing to put the time that it takes. Because you usually have to grow with the projects, I think. Thank you yes, so much. Oh, sorry to cut you off. No, I, I just said that it's a process that you start with the smaller projects and then you grow to, to bigger ones. That's well, I think it. all of us are looking forward to seeing this complete and also looking forward to the day when we all can travel again safely and to yeah. see you out here to see the project. Um, with that, I just want to thank everybody and remind you that next week we'll be featuring Brad Goldberg talking about the Pueblo Grande Museum entrance 
and walkway project, which is a remarkable and award-winning project. And that'll be something for you to tune into. And then beyond that, same time on Thursday, 10 a.m., the, the last uh, Thursday of the month, uh, Joe Willie Smith will be visiting us and showing us his studio and work. And with that, I just want to say vote wherever you are. And we look forward to seeing you the next time around. Thanks, Adios,